Robert Keegan, development psychologist, Harvard professor and consultant. Welcome to Voicester. Thank you. Uh, Robert, if I sort of start with a broad question, when you talk about growth, what do you mean by growth and why is it important for growth, even for us adults? Yes, it's a, it's a good question because it tends to be an overused and not well understood term, actually. Um, so when I was a graduate student in the 1970s, if you were a developmental psychologist, it literally meant you studied infants, children, and adolescents, end of story, because we had yoked our conceptions of psychological or mental growth yeah. to our conceptions of physical growth. And just like most people don't get any taller than they reach in their early 20s, the brain scientists were adamant that the brain did all of its developing in the first 20 to 25 years. We now know today, and even the brain scientists have recanted this uh, false orthodoxy, mm -hmm. that uh, we can keep growing and developing you know, uh, long past our physical growth period. All right. And not only can we, but we need to. It's very interesting if you look at the literature on burnout, for example, which is sort of a bureaucratic way of talking about depression in the context of work, Yeah, that burnout is not accounted for largely by just overloading people. You know, we gave her too much to do and we burnt her out. Most people are overloaded today, but most people aren't burning out. So that's not actually a very powerful piece of the explanation. It turns out that the much bigger contributor to burnout is being too long on the same developmental plateau without experiencing the vitalizing and renewing effects of your own increase. So individuals need to keep growing and developing and their organizations need them to as well because our organizations face a set of challenges that require people to become bigger versions of themselves. So it's a, it's a way to, to yes, stay vitalized and stay healthy for, both for the organization and for the individual. Yes, yeah. well not only to stay healthy but to actually Fulfill our destiny. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, the prevailing view on sort of people development for much of the you know, last uh, couple decades and still continuing is the strength-based approach. You're probably familiar with this. And it, yeah. it grows out of positive psychology and the notion that we should quit torturing people with their limitations and weaknesses. Let's just figure out their strengths leverage the heck out of their strengths, hire around their weaknesses, and quit torturing the poor person. And this sounds like a very compassionate approach, but it actually amounts to selling a person short. It actually amounts to saying, you know, because somebody, I remember a guy said to me, look, Al is always going to be Al. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. 40 years old. You know who Al is. This is how he's going to be. Well, when you take that perspective that, you know, Al is always going to be Al, you're basically saying, you know, that their growth potential is over. And that actually is the kind of thing that leads to the devitalization and disengagement, which we see in such large percentages at work today, because not enough people actually feel that work is a place where they can experience their own growth. That is the number one most precious income people seek from work, whether they know it or not. Of course, you want a good salary, you want good health benefits. But what, what really you know, keeps people truly engaged is the feeling that work is a place where I actually become a bigger and better version of ourselves. I always say the strength-based approach is kind of, if you applied it you know, to caterpillars, you might get bigger and stronger caterpillars, but you wouldn't get a whole lot of butterflies. All right. And on that area, on the, on, on speaking of growth, you have this uh, comfort zone, a stretch zone, and a snap zone, a way you describe how you can sort of challenge your, your yes. ways and develop. Could you uh, elaborate on that? Yes. So the bigger underlying idea is that we need to move from looking for the next great leadership development program or the next you know, good talent development program and think about how to create the work culture itself so that it is a more powerful context for people's growth and development. So the two things are going on. You know, the work is getting done. Okay? The, you know, the horizontal uh, forward march of the business is, is happening. But also the, the vertical dimension that people are growing and developing is what actually accelerates the speed kind of on the horizontal. Yeah. So you, you want people you know, to be able to keep growing and developing. You want a culture that supports that. Okay, what kind of culture supports that? Everybody talks about you know, the comfort zone and you know, getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. 
But, you know, I think it's useful to consider like maybe two concentric rings beyond the comfort zone. And that first zone is what I call the stretch zone. It's, it's a zone that does have a certain degree of discomfort because you're experiencing your own, I'll put it bluntly, incompetence. Yeah, you know? yeah. Most people like to feel competent, like I've got it together all the time. But if you're only doing work around which you feel you've got it together all the time, you're not actually involved in any kind of stretch. No. It's sort of like if you could master the curriculum you know, of, a, of an academic program on the first week, you know, how would you feel? Initially, you might feel terrific because you're the smartest kid in class. But after a while, it's going to feel a little boring. Yeah. I've talked to parents who of bright kids whose kids are bored in, in school because they're not being challenged enough. We all do need a certain level of challenge. There's another rung outside this stretch zone, which is not a good rung either. The rung of stretching so far, pushing people so hard, you know, that they snap or break under the pressure. We don't want to be in that third zone. But we don't want to spend all the time in the comfort zone either. Today, two big ideas that are, that are getting overworked is this notion of betting completely on the strengths. Yeah. And the other idea is this idea of psychological safety. Okay, psychological safety is important, but we need to understand its purpose. Yeah. You know, it, and its purpose is actually to create a context that will help people to grow. So you need to pair psychological safety with challenge. And that is going to feel uncomfortable. Nobody can be even in that stretch zone all the time. You need to have a rich kind of movement back and forth between the comfort zone, yeah. where you do feel you know, in control and you have the pleasure of exercising the strengths that you have, but you also need to accept invitations and have invitations extended on a regular basis to move into that stretch zone. That's what creates an environment where people are growing. And how, how would you know if you're in the snap zone? What are the signs one should look out for to, to see that, oh my God, I might be in too yeah. much discomfort? Or, or yeah, that's conversely, a good question if you're, too. Yeah. Good question. So I think it's a little bit like the question of good pain you know, versus bad pain, right? So pain can be a part of the actual stretch process. Like, you know, physical therapists will tell you when you're working out, you're basically tearing muscle. It sounds kind of violent, you know, but it's actually the way in which you build up more strength. Labor pains, though every woman tells me I should never use this analogy because I have no clue what labor pain really is, and I agree I don't. <laughs> but yeah. labor pain, metaphorically anyway, is a good pain. It yeah. leads to new life. Okay. Yeah. Then there are lots of other pains that are basically your body telling you, don't do that. Stop doing that because that's not good for you. So... Your question is really, how do we get better at discerning sort of good pain, you know, from bad pain? Yeah. And I think there that you have to consult sort of your sense of, do you, are you feeling like this is helping you ultimately to get to a better place? Or are you feeling that you're basically having to kind of defend yourself against this because in some way it feels like it's actually, you know, diminishing you in some way? If you feel your fundamental worth, you know, is at risk. If you feel like it's a, the stakes are so high all the time that, you know, if you fail, it's going to be a disaster, yeah. then you're in a situation, you know, that is not wholesome. And uh, finally, Robert, what's your number one tip for, should we say, the typical worker or the everyday, the everyday worker to, uh, to grow? to I think, take on these things yes. that you've been speaking about. I think the number one tip, of course, this always goes faster if the people who have the most power and who are at the top are strongly believing these kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, because then you're working in a place, you know, where you get all kinds of support for this to happen. Yeah. But often people are listening to me who don't work in such places. And, you know, my number one tip for them is that nobody, you know, can deprive you of your right to keep growing and developing. And that the nature of the social contract, so to speak, that you form at work yeah. needs to be one that is not where you're not just a means, you know, to the organization's end, yeah. but where you feel that the organization is a place that it can support your development. Now, if you if there's no support for that, you know, then uh, one, you might be thinking about maybe finding a, a different job. But okay, I realize that's not always realistic. Yeah. So you know, there are a lot of kind of um, sort of stealth operations going on in lots of organizations around the world where the organization hasn't committed to being a growth culture. 
but a few people band together and they say, hey, can, you know, can I support you and will you support me? Even if you find one other person at work who will be kind of your developmental partner, somebody that you kind of check in with, somebody where you're identifying you know, a growth goal, someone where you're kind of pre-briefing the day and thinking, where is the learning opportunity for me you know, today? Somebody who will let you role play with them as you practice a difficult conversation. You can find that for yourself, even if the organization won't support it. It all starts out with recognizing you have a right to keep growing and developing. You're wired to grow. You're meant to grow. You have a right to that. All right. All right. Robert Keegan, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure talking with you. Pleasure.